Glad to have you back. The U.S. State Department says it has urged Saudi Arabia to carry out any prosecution of officials detained in a sweeping crackdown and corruption in a fair and transparent manner. Authorities detained dozens of top Saudis, including billionaire Prince Al Walid bin Talal, in a move widely seen as an attempt by Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman to neutralize opposition to its ascent. Joining us via Skype is the public affairs analyst Sam Party. Many thanks for joining us, Sam. Let's start with the U.S. president's tweet saying what Saudi is doing is right. And the State Department said, okay, it's good to arrest them, but please treat them with some kind of a, a, a human face. What do you have to say to that? Well, you know, I think what is interesting is that um, those that have been arrested have been treated in more kindness than a human face. Of course, I know President Trump they said that um, those that were arrested, including the princes, have been milking the country, that's Saudi Arabia, for a very long time. But um, after they were arrested, these people are not in police cells or in a military jail or anything like that. They are actually being detained at um, the Ritz Carlton Hotel. We're talking about one of the most expensive hotels in the world, uh, especially in Saudi Arabia. So they've they just been detained in in a fancy beautiful nice hotel so i think that's a nice way to go to jail if that's the case so they've been treated with kindness well um I, i'm sure anyone would like to be in such a jail um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but let me ask you now was this move in any way um about correcting injustices in the general population or was it for a select elite you know, there has been um, there have been mixed feelings about this. Uh, first off, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, who is now the Crown Prince, um, has been uh, this arrest. Uh, the move has been welcomed by uh, a large part of the Saudi population, especially the young people, um, who said that for a very long time they've been denied a lot of opportunities because they have a select uh, business elites and people in their royal family that have been taking advantage of uh, their statuses. Now, uh, if you look on the other hand, in Europe especially, uh, they are criticizing uh, Mohammed bin Salman for trying to consolidate power. Yeah, you need to remember bin Salman over the past um, three, two to three years has been kind of consolidating power a little bit. Uh, in 2000, since 2015, after his father came in power, he was the deputy crown prince. But he launched the Saudi-led coalition attacks on Yemen that has killed um, tens of uh, more than 10,000 people now and um, he is also the one that is behind the diplomatic role right now between uh, some six Middle Eastern um, nations and Qatar so he has been involved in, in, in his fair share of controversies but it likely is it is likely seen as a way to cop corruption and paving a way uh, in such a way that he doesn't face a lot of opposition to his vision 2030 mm -hmm. and his vision 2030 is more of a dream where he wants to make Saudi less dependent on oil and kind of modernize it a little bit so which means that they can now have cinemas and theaters and entertainment centers and um, can also focus into building other industries instead of oil industries and he feels that maybe he is going to face a lot of opposition and it was about time to kind of get rid of those or make those that are going to oppose that agenda less powerful. All right, let's look at uh, Salman's lash out uh, against his neighbor in the same uh, sweep with, with this anti-corruption crackdown, lashing out at Iran, lashing out at, at, at Lebanon. And some are uh, pointing a finger to uh, Donald Trump that is a, a, a willing ally in terms of uh, a war in proxy in that region. Now, over the, over in, the, in the Obama administration now, you will see that um, Obama didn't align like too much with um, Saudi Arabia. Obama was, um, uh, and you cannot say he was aligned as well with Iran. But at that time, one could understand that Obama was trying to get a nuclear deal with Iran. So in that, in that, from that perspective, he didn't do a lot as it would be expected with the South. Now, come to Donald Trump, Donald Trump is against Obama's Ira Iranian nuclear deal. Hmm. So he is having a lot more to do with the Saudi Arabians and trying tending to agree with them a lot more. So that cannot be completely ruled out. But the fact remains is that Saudi Arabia and Iran 
uh, the competitors when it comes to being a superpower in that particular side of the world. So um, Saudi has always considered the Shiite Muslim theocracy in Iran as mm -hmm. um, a big threat. Uh, this agreement has been uh, this disagreement has been a long this time disagreement since the death of the um, the Muslim prophet um, prophet Muhammad over over who uh, succeeds him. Now uh, now that's an entire history of its own. But again. Um, when it comes to what is happening now, of course, you can see President Trump and the U.S. is back in Saudi Arabia against Iran. And um, Saudi, on the other hand, is accusing uh, the currently, like the, the, you mentioned Lebanon, they are accusing some factions within the uh, Lib uh, Lebanese government of being supported and backed by Iran. And this especially is related to Hezbollah. And um, uh, uh, Lebanese president have uh, stepped down. He is currently in Saudi Arabia, and he is accusing Hezbollah of threatening his life and taking a greater control um, in the country. And Iran's politics is divided into two. You have a section that is that is uh, supporting the Saudi agenda, and you have another section that is supporting the uh, the Iran agenda. And this can totally destabilize that region. Well, Sam, tell us, what does this move by the Saudi government, which is the world's top oil exporter, pretend for other oil exporting countries? Well, you know, it could mean a lot to the, um, um, the oil prices. Oil prices are already dwindling across the world, and we, we can see the impact on it on oil producing nations. I mean, over the past um, couple of uh, couple of months, in Saudi Arabia alone, the prices of oil have actually plunged. It just took a nose dive. Um, this impact can also be seen um, in uh, in other countries that are even struggling to have their oil industry come back up, like Libya. The impact is already seen um, in Nigeria, even though that um, uh, the president, uh, the Nigerian president Mohamed Buhari, did say that Nigeria came out of recession. The fact that the oil prices have dwindled can be felt, um, uh, the shock of that can be felt still uh, in the economy of the West African state. So, and, and Bin Saud's um, entire agenda is also is also planning to sell 5% of, of the Saudi state-owned oil company to privatize it. So that, that all of these things have um, um, impacts and, and effects. Now, sometimes it could be seen as a gamble. Is this really going to work out or is not going to work out? Now, even if they privatize the 5% uh, of, of Saudi's um, state oil Amco company, it does not mean that oil prices are going to go up. And I think the Saudis know this as well. So it is a, that they realize that it's about time. I think oil producing countries are all realizing that it's about time that they don't stay too dependent on oil and they can go ahead to look for something else. So you can see why Mohammed bin, uh, bin Salman is trying to make sure that he doesn't face resistance or dissidence uh, when it comes to him uh, rolling out his reform agenda at all. Well, strategic, if you ask me. Sam Fati, yeah. Global Affairs Analyst, thank you for your very incisive insights. Thank you. My pleasure.